what is the key message you want to convey at the ITB convention and what are the insights you want the audience to take home? I think one of the most important things is that because business travel is somewhere between 1.4 and 1.5 trillion dollars in total spend and it's a very organized spend with procurement people and big companies and small companies organizing how that travel happens that we're really the tip of the spear for many things that can happen in the in the travel space in general so when it comes to pushing governments to help with investment for innovations that come with sustainability especially in aviation i think that is a place where corporate travel can really make a big difference and that's why everybody should pay attention to business travelers whether while they're either in a rail station or in an airport or doing other things as they're on the road. Okay. So the motto of this year's ITB convention is pioneer the transition in travel and tourism together. From, from your perspective, what is the biggest challenge of this transition and how can it be tackled in these times? There are, I think, a couple of transitions that I see. One is that pre-COVID, Uh, certainly China business travel was a huge component and we haven't seen Chinese come back in the same way now that their borders are open so uh, making up that difference is something that certainly our suppliers are, are looking for. I think another transition I've already mentioned which is sustainability and the sustainability equation is really important. Um, Corporations like to measure, governments like to measure, and there's a lot of different standards. So one of the other pieces of, of work that we're doing is part of the harmonization process to work with other like-minded associations and other industry groups and uh, come together for standards within aviation, within hospitality, within ground transport and mobility. So working on standardization is a long-term process? Absolutely long-term process. And it will change along the way as new solutions come, come forward and better ways of measurement. Um, we measure carbon today, but there might be some other greenhouse gases that we should be measuring as well. And I think that there's, a, there's that total equation of, of book and claim as well, where corporations may not have sustainable aviation fuel in the plane that they're flying their people. But if they're buying SAF credits, they should be getting credit for the trips that, uh, that their organizations are making. And I think those accounting rules, travel and accounting don't always go well together, but in corporate space they definitely do. And in thinking about the way accounting can help the transition to carbon tracking and the way that corporations invest in innovative solutions, they want to get credit for it. And I think that's the real, real real missing link right now. And these are all long-term challenges which take a long time to, to really They're long-term but they're short-term. You know, some of those measurements could uh, could be within two to three years for either the EU or other governments to start that trend forward. Singapore is making some, uh, some news recently in the way that they are requiring SAF in every plane. And I think that those kinds of things um, It takes a few short steps to make a long step, and I think we're on our path to making making up the pace uh, from what has been a very slow pace to get where we need to go. Okay, Mrs. Norfolk, thank you very much for your time and thank you for your insights. Thanks for about having me. Thank you.